No, oh, I, oh. I had a guy just came up just five minutes ago. He says, that's when they change going. He says, <laughs> he, says uh, he says, hey, can I tell you something? I'm an actor. I just want to know. I love your show. I love my wife. <laughs> yeah. He goes, it really, I just really, it, it, it really made me, it, I got married. Diane. Diane, didn't that guy say, I love your show, I love my wife? Oh, <laughs> didn't that guy say to me, I love your show, I love my wife? Yeah. 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 And he goes, he said, he said, he goes, that was it, really good, Mike. It, it, made me, it made me want to get married. Oh. I went, whoa, you saw it backwards? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you a fun story. So, are you familiar with The Big Lebowski? My, one of my favorite movies ever. Okay, so, <laughs> my partner, Mark Friedman, sent... Um, the screenplay of The Contender to Jeff Bridges' uh, attorney. And the attorney gave it to Jeff, and now Jeff wants to meet. Yeah. And so he says, okay, you got to come up on uh, the Saturday morning, or no, whatever, some morning, 10 a.m. at his place in um, Santa Barbara, or close to Santa Barbara. So I go up there. It's 10 in the morning, 10 in the morning, and I ring the doorbell, and Jeff answers, and he's literally wearing the Lebowski clothes. I don't mean Lebowski light clothes. I mean exactly the pajama yeah. and the robe and the T-shirt. And it's 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 absolutely he even had the sunglasses. Oh my God, it's crazy, right? And so I I said, Jeff, are you wearing the Lebowski clothes? And he says, Au contraire, <laughs> Lebowski was wearing my clothes. <laughs> and the truth the truth yeah, is right. that he was told to bring whatever outfit he wanted. So he's in wow. a Lebowski outfit. Wow. So he says to me, remember, it's 10 in the morning, and he says to me, uh, what do you want to drink? <laughs> and so as a, I know I'm a teetotaler. I don't drink at all. But as a joke, what do you think I say? <laughs> oh, white <laughs> Russians. White Russians. Where I was. Yeah. So how about white Russians? And he thinks, and he rubs his chin, and he says, um, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So he goes, and he gets like a whole, like four or five or six white Russians and some croissants. Yeah. And he says, let's go sit outside. I said, I don't really drink, Jeff. And so Jeff, I, if my recollection is correct, over the course of two hours, consumed all the white Russians. <laughs> so now he's walking me to my car. He puts his arms around me, and he says, the dude as president, who would have thunk it? <laughs> it's going to be Clooney for the Talking Dead Opossum. <laughs> or they get Tom Kenny. Yeah, Tom right. Tom Ken- yeah. yeah. Like, oh man. If I could uh, just get past is, Clooney. Isn't there a part of you that just wants to tell Tom, sit on the bench for a while? Yeah, when well, they got see him on money. auditions. Yeah. yeah. Tom, we got this one here, okay? Yeah. 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 <laughs> this one, uh, you know. Hey, we'd, all, we'd all like to make a little money, and that's okay with you. <laughs> Georgia Lottery yeah. m- Memorial Day commercial <laughs> for the radio, Tom? <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Sit oh, back. It's nice he wants to work that much. I'd just be sitting on it and eating Chinese every day. Right. Well, the thing mad. is, the funny thing is, he's such a sweet guy. And the fact is, he's he's got a lot of people now. He's very successful in cartoons because he's so great. Yeah. But he's got also a lot of people who just want to work with SpongeBob, and they want him to call home. Put on their kids' machine. Yeah. You know. okay. uh, hey, Timmy, it's me, SpongeBob. You're, I'm working with your dad here, and he says, you know, you're one. And and I've seen him oblige a million times, and oh. he even did it for me once. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, it's my son's birthday. But he did it for you. Do me a favor. Can you give me a little a little recording? There's no problem. He goes, what's his name? You know, what school is he going? What's his name of his teachers? What, give me, and he does this whole thing. You know, hey Richard. Now Tom's known my son since. He was born, yeah. you know, so it's a little more familiar, and it's it's not quite. I felt it was it wasn't that bad of a thing to do, but so anyway, he does this whole thing, and their whole class. I hear you know you're the I hear you're the the nicest kid around, and the, your whole class is full of cool people like like Jimmy and Martha and Joni, and he's got the names of friends, you know, he's done the whole thing. Wow. I take it home to my son. I go take a listen to this, pal, and <laughs> he puts it in and listens to it. And I go, take it to school tomorrow, huh? He's like, no fucking way am I taking that to school. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I would never play that in school. Oh. Oh, what? I did cartoon voices. So the Ghostbusters, right? Extreme Ghostbusters, yeah, I think you and, did. And, and Yeah, I did. Uh, real Ghostbusters. Yeah. I did the Muppet Babies for eight seasons. Um, I, did, I did a lot of voice work. So I submitted a tape to, uh, a voiceover tape yeah. to Hanna-Barbera. On a Friday and on Monday, it sounds like I'm wow. making this up. I got a call and they said, "Can you work on Scooby Doo?" Wow! And so I—that was the first like showbiz 
Hollywood job that I got out here was doing voices on, on Scooby. That's and right. so I always had that going on on the side. And then I, I did a lot of obscure voice things. I, I looped Richard Pryor, uh, oh, wow. his voice. Uh, I would take out all the swear words for you know when movies go into syndication, yeah. and uh, you so know, they when... had Dave Coulier doing the voice of Richard Pryor. Yeah, that's some weird stuff, Jack. Because wow. you know you you got to like get into a different head, <laughs> <laughs> and that's some weird stuff, there, Jack. <laughs> that's great. That's yeah. good. Wow. But who would have ever guessed you're watching USA and see no evil, hear no evil, there yeah. hear no evil, see no evil, then and it's Dave. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, and you hear Richard saying stuff like, oh, shucks, mother, father. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know. So you're the mother, father I'm guy. The mother, yeah. father you're the guy. oh, shucks. Yeah. yeah. But I, I became a copycat, and uh, for the Mork and Mindy cartoon, I did Robin Williams' wow. voice while he was off making, uh, he was doing a movie, Popeye, actually, yeah. over in Malta. With Robert Altman, yeah. And so I did all the voice tracks, uh, so the animators could animate to the voice tracks. Oh, and they gave me a lot less money. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Oh, of course, oh, yes. You, you asshole. I saw you, <laughs> Brett Cullen, I saw him in the trailer for The Dark Knight yeah, Rises. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, baby. And yeah, I buddy. go, look at this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he, gets in, he gets into The Dark Knight Rises. He's got his own scene in the trailer. He delivers a line in the trailer that sets up the trailer. I'm like, what a lucky SOB. Good hey, for you. Hey, man. They took me to London and Nottingham, got to shoot that Jeez. film. And, um, you know, it's, it was great that I got in because it's really a small supporting role. I yeah. have. It's, you know, it's important for the film. But, yeah. You know, you, then it ended up in the trailer. I was kind of like, well, that's really cool. I love Chris like Nolan. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Chris Nolan. Now, I you, love Chris <laughs> Nolan. Did you have to audition or did you offer it to you? No, I auditioned. I had to go read for Chris. He said, it was one of those situations where you, you know, you, you know I've done this for a long time, as you know. Yeah. I walked in, he said hello, and he was pacing, and his wife was sitting there, who's the producer, and I read the scene. And just as I walked in, the guy turned to me, the casting director, and says, think Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you anything else about what the character is, but I go, got it. And, and I read the scene, and he went, thank you. And I left, and I thought, well, that was like those sort of pilot auditions you had back in the 80s, where you had five a day, and you just walk in, and they go, yes, great, leave, thanks. Yeah. And I thought, nothing of it, and then I got the call saying, you know, you got the part. So oh, yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, it does oh, look awesome. It does prologue. look awesome. But no, Chris prologue. as the director is one of those guys that actually stops. I mean, that's he knows what he wants when he sees it, and he doesn't yeah. mess around. And then when you get into the work itself, he's so incredibly specific. I heard that about David Chase too. David Chase, yeah. he knows what he wants. He tells you, how, you know, what he wants, and then you do it and you nail it. And yeah. I hear they're just easy directors to work with because they're very specific. Did you? It was Chris Nolan like? I, I would. Walk through broken glass for that good, miles right? To, walk with him, to work yeah. with him again, yeah. I've I mean, never heard a bad thing ever about that guy, no. ever. You know, there were some people that thought you hated me last time you were on the really? show, and you would never come back. Your mother was no, one of my them? mother liked you. No, really? no, my mother. Well, my mother thinks everyone hates me, so well, how that wouldn't shock me. Let's, let's, we're not going to get into that. Let's though. go yeah. back to talk about how you've been doing since you left the mo your mother's basement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm doing okay. We moved out here. Okay. And, Do you live uh, here at the Coney Island Hot I Dog? actually live inside Coney, Coney Dog. Dog. In the Coney it's Dog. It's so crazy that He's you bring that up. He's in the attic. like a little Coney Dog bun. Yeah. He's in the attic. I'm in the basement. Yeah. I have a hot dog <laughs> bun bed. Matt has a bed. It's like a bed fries. of fries. It's a fries carton. Like all the pillows are Cover fries. Cover yourself in a chili blanket. <laughs> right. At night, a vegan chili blanket. It's, right. it's very, it's very home. It's yeah. homely. And, uh, homely or yeah. homey? Yeah, homey too. We we're doing okay. I'm writing. I'm I'm looking to get some auditions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Doing all right. You know, made the big move. You made the big move. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Where, where do you live? Studio City. Yeah. In a studio. Yeah. No. Well, pretty close. You guys live together. We yeah. do. We are really roommates. And yeah. Here's a here's a question. Isn't that cute? Do, yeah. Well. Well. Mm. All right. That's <laughs> do you have right answer? Do you have uh, a one bathroom or a two bathroom apartment? One one bathroom. One bathroom. One bathroom. Three men. Uh, wow. See, here's the problem with I, I've just moved back in with my sister here. Two yeah. Men, two men of Mediterranean descent. Oh, so God. you're no longer in the Montana. Well, I still have the Montana house. Yeah. 
But um, You're it's on harder it to find employment in Montana, sure. shockingly, sure. other than like, you the know, The entertainment business hurting. isn't booming in Montana, no. Surprisingly. No, you're just hanging out with Dennis Quaid at the Dairy oh, Queen. It's yeah. So, <laughs> you're taking so a bag boring. of silage down to the... <laughs> a Jeff Bridges and I hanging out at the Boiling River in Yellowstone. Is he in Montana, too? Naked. Is in Jeff in hot... Montana? Yes. He is? Wow. Uh, well, sometimes. Wow. Yeah, he lives really close I to me. I know Dennis is. Does cool. he get naked? Does he get naked? I don't know. There's a boy. There's Andy something called McDowell, the... I heard, gets naked. Yeah. And Andy she's McDowell. in Montana. I heard she's a nudist. We're I... gossiping here now, though. You know, I, I tried to be a nudist, but nudists <laughs> are um, generally not as, as sexy as you'd want them to be. No, no. No, they look more like me and Lee. Right. I, I always kind of, and I think we all do this sometimes, it's like, I'm not, listen, there's so much shit I know nothing about and so much that, that scares the hell out of me and that I'm massively insecure about. I started writing when I was 14, 15 years old. You know what I mean? And so uh, there's a lot of things I don't know, but the thing I do know it will always bail me out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I feel like it's like a guy who picked up a guitar when he's three. By the time he's 40, he should know how to play the fucking guitar. Right. So I, I just look at it like a that it's a I, – I don't ever – I you know, I never wanted to – and listen, we could sit here. I could tell you stories about my time on Mission Impossible 3. A lot of them are hysterical because they're just so crazy. But I never – felt that I just don't I don't like the idea of of backing down or ceding to especially this town man. Yeah, it's man. like I don't care enough about it to you know listen I care about the work and right. the people I work with and the people I form relationships with the perception of who I am beyond listen the idea that people thought oh, this guy just does the A team and he does just does movies like that this is an answer to that it's like nobody does one thing any more brother than you than you write one kind of thing I think it's incredibly limiting and I've always said I'll use a baseball analogy I always want to be the guy I can hit lead off. I get clean up. I'll play center field. I'll hit utility. Whatever. I just I want to be able to do all those things. And the guys I admire, the Cohen brothers, Steven Soderbergh, these are the guys that make movies. They never repeat themselves. Right. right. You know. You know, I didn't come out of NYU theater, and I didn't go to Juilliard, and so there's not a formal. I don't have formal training. So you know, for me, it's about learning as much about who I think the character is as I possibly can, and whether that's me living with Greg Jackson in New Mexico for two months and literally shadowing him morning, noon, and night and, and learning to fight and learning how to train fighters or with Diaz going and staying at Rikers Island and starting to get the essence of what it's like to be a, you know, a real criminal, a guy who lives on the other side of convention. And I think because of my lack of, of understanding of, of, of training, uh, I kind of go overboard with the research. And for me, it works. I don't, you know, maybe for other people it doesn't work, but for me, it changes my DNA a bit, you know. And yeah, so no. hopefully, and, and you know, hopefully it it, it it comes off on screen so that it's there, there's nothing manufactured. I was playing it. I play at the Cafe Carlisle in New York every holiday season, and I close on New Year's Eve, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, last year in the, in December, the end of December, I got a call that President Clinton was coming in. See me. Yeah. And uh, I went downstairs and early, and he was sitting there with Chelsea and Mrs. Clinton, and Secretary of State, you know. And I walked in, and he saw me, and he got up. And he said, man, I've been playing your Christmas album all day long. I got the family all charged up. <laughs> well, um, I did my show, you know, and he told me that night that he danced with Chelsea to my version of the way oh. you look tonight. Oh, that's oh. Right. And so I sang it to her. They, she was sitting right in front of me, and and him and Mrs. Clinton. And when I started singing, she got up from the table because she was closest to me. Yeah. She was over there and she was over here, and I'm on the stage. And I thought, is she going to the bathroom, man? <laughs> yeah. Like all of a sudden, I'm dedicating this song to her, and she gets up in the middle of it right when it starts. I thought she was like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, right. No, but she got up and went around the table and sat next to her dad. You know? Oh. And he started to cry. It's so cool. Can I say that I have, uh, I've showed up to offices before, and I've, yeah. I've walked in, and I thought, well, it's obviously not. That's the re that's the restaurant. The office must be around the corner. So I spent five minutes trying to contact somebody because I just figured, well, where it's not happening is a hot dog restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> but we're in a hot dog restaurant. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Binder has uh, reeled me into the hot dog Fantastic. joint. Well, it's branding. Yeah. 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 You like it? It's kind of a cool uh, Listen, little joint. I yeah. love I love hot dogs. And it's you know what? It, it's very Chicago because 
on Chicago radio, I remember li- listening to, uh, what was it, Stephen uh, Stephen Stephen Gary. Gary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, Ditka had a show, didn't he? Yeah. At, at his restaurant. And you'd always hear this in the background. Yeah. And I thought, where's the... Well, atmosphere. The atmosphere LP. Yeah. But yeah. it's not an LP. No, no, not here. We actually get real people to come in here like Ken Hommel, number one guy on the planet, and uh, and enjoy the show. Yeah. I always thought that was Adam. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can look forward to many, many jokes like that. Before. Frank Sinatra never knew how much in awe of him I was, because I wouldn't let him know that. I know that he had enough fans. He had millions of fans, and it's something I picked up when I first met him. I thought I was going to be with him for one week, and I was going to. I said, "Oh, this is great. I'll get my picture taken. I'll hang it in every bar back in Chicago, and then I'll move on." But it turned into 14 years of 45, 50 cities a year because I really I liked him, and I think he liked me because I never. Uh, you know, I, I never let him know how much an awe I was. After a show, I would you know, say, great crowd. And I'd say, hey, you see what the Cubs did today? They traded somebody or the Dodgers lost. Today. You know, he had enough fans. He didn't need another fan. Yeah. And so yeah. we became my pals. The other thing is, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Irish Italian. Yeah. You know, my people came from Sicily, and so did his. And he's, he was, you know, I think half Crusades and half uh, Sicilian. We... Um, you know, I had I had three children. I had a girl, boy, girl. He had a girl, boy, girl. You know, um, you know, I, we liked a lot of the same things, and and also I enjoyed performing with him so much because he was such a professional, and I'm I'm the same way. You want you know with Frank, you want to party with Frank. He'd drink everybody in this place under the table. He'd huh. have the greatest time with you. But showtime was very very important to him as it is yeah. with me. You want to goof around? We'll goof all weekend. We don't goof the show off. Right. The show is important, and and uh, so I, I and he. I, I approached the show with the same sort of um, professionalism that he did, that he taught me, you know, as well as the years I toured with Sammy Davis that he taught me, you know. So, I mean, I, I think that, you know, I, I would stay at his house six, seven times a year. We'd, we'd ride around the car. Frank never went to bed till dawn. When the sun came up, Frank went to bed, no matter where we were, whether we were on the road or off the road. So I would hang with him. And some nights we'd talk about personal things, and, you know, and uh, he'd tell me about growing up in Hoboken. And I'd tell him what was like growing up in Harvey, you know. And uh, we, just, we just had a real good relationship. I made him laugh. How'd you do those late nights with Frank? Didn't you want to go to bed? Many nights. <laughs> Many, I mean, I have to tell you, I'm a golfer. You know, I yeah. love to get him and play golf. Oh, and, yeah. and this guy, you know, he, the hardest I ever made him laugh one time, we were in Las Vegas. We had been on the road doing one-nighters all over the country. Then we pulled into Vegas to open at the Desert Inn. We did two shows at the D.I., and uh, that night, we're, it's 4.30 in the morning, and he's going strong. I wanted to go to bed. And he had five or six guys with us. And I just got up at 4.30 in the morning. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to bed. He said, what for? I said, i got to go to the cemetery and visit those guys. He said, what guys? I said, all those guys who died trying to stay up with you every night. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed, and he said, go to bed. But then he made me tell that story wherever we go. Now, do I have to teach you about yeah. Twitter? Yes, all you right. do. This is going to be it for your li- Audio. Yeah, Matt, Matt's terrible at Twitter. This moment, he's, he's not. He's not good with social media. It's not right, his what, strong, strong thing. Here, I run. Uh-huh. I run too much. I run my mouth too much. It I took don't know me about to ten minutes to get my sixty-five-year-old mother. Oh no! Who oh. like if it if it has a button, she's like, I don't know. I don't know. Talk to your talk to Mike. I don't want to. I don't know. Call the guy. And now she's got like a couple thousand followers. And the tweet she just hit just now before I walked into this diner was complaining to the Twitter people of her verification thing got that got pulled off. And she's like, hey, I came to the 21st century. I'm here now. Why did you do this thing with my... And I'm like, yeah, Mom, you go for it. So here you go. Oh, All right? Man. It's very simple. All right. It's like a mass email. Okay. Okay? If you want... If you have, you know, 30 people you want to send an email to, you, you put them one by one in the yeah. two column, or you CC them or whatever, and you send it, and they all get it. So all this is is, a, is kind of a bulk email... And people choose whether they want um, to see all the emails that you're publishing. Right. So we're here, right? Yeah. You choose me. You're going to follow me. Yeah. Anytime I, you know, write, I tweet, you know, boy, this hot dog is better than the last one. Boom. It's going to pop up on your thing. You're going to read it. Yeah. You listening, Matt? Yes, I'm listening. Okay. Hashtag. Yeah. My producer, Caesar, just said hashtag. Hashtag. Yeah, no, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Hashtag is coming. <laughs> okay. All right? I've become the new Twitter, like, maven. <laughs> Everyone sit down. I'm going to explain Twitter. Okay, so everyone has... Hey, their explain own... to Matt the filtering part. Explain yeah, that's what... the part about you don't always say everything you're thinking. 
<laughs> well, I use the word filter to des- to describe one of the things that happens in Twitter. But oh, see, that's I, a technical term. No, no, that's not how you meant it. You meant like, dude, shut up. I need a finger. Right. Stop it's talking. A, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Chris, Sean is in the process of landing the Steve Jobs biopic role with this. So I, I feel like I'm off. getting spanked right getting now spanked. on every end. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else are we going to do? All right, so be nice to each other. Each. <laughs> so this is runthird.com hashtag. No, no, stop, stop, but no? stop. Back up. No, I don't know. Oh, Everyone no. who has a Twitter, <laughs> just listen. You're going to follow me. You're going right. to understand it. Your audience is going to understand it. Your audience All is right. screaming right now. Be quiet. He's about to explain it to us. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone has a handle. Okay. And a handle is basically your email address. What's your email address? No, no, no. Don't tell everyone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so my handle... My Twitter address, if you will, is at Sean Aston, right? Easy enough. At Sean, easy enough. So anybody who wants to see all of my tweets goes to at Sean Aston and clicks follow. If they're tired of my tweets because I tweet too much about run third, which I'm going to describe in a second, they can unfollow. <laughs> now, so you can you can find – that's one way that you can filter – different word – you, different usage. <laughs> One way that you can filter is you find someone who you're interested in, you put in their address, and you just look at you just look at everything they tweet. Or you're following lots of people. You follow me, and you follow him, and you follow him, right? And then when you turn on your Twitter thing, oh, you see what each different person has tweeted that day. That's cool, yeah. right? Okay. Now, there's another way to access your tweeting. And it's called hashtags. All right. Say it with me. Hashtags. hashtags. All right. Hashtags. And what is it? What is a hashtag? It's a pound sign. It's a pound sign. Now okay. that's not so. Hard. All right. All right. It's a pound sign, and then any word after it. Okay. Okay. Or collection of letters or whatever. Anybody who uses a hashtag in their tweet, right? So you tweet, you know, Sean tried to explain Twitter to me. Hashtag I don't understand. And I'm like, <laughs> I tried to explain Twitter to you. Hashtag he didn't understand. Right. You can then. Load in that hashtag name, and it'll pull up just a strand of those tweets. Oh, So wow. you're not looking at it so it's like per a search. person. It's like a search. It filters it. It filters it is what there I There we go. So what I've started, yeah. and anybody can tweet and uh, can create a hashtag. I mean, any, every, you could do one every time you, you send out a tweet, and they could be totally inane. You know, burger, fart, yeah. whatever, whatever it is, yeah. you know. <laughs> Sometimes those are related, actually. No. Yeah. That's so, most of my tweets, burgers <laughs> right. and fart. <laughs> no, but my... The the point is that no one tw- tweet is, or uh, hashtag is necessarily more interesting than another. It's just a matter of who's choosing to use it. Now, certain ones. Well, that's not necessarily true. There are some hashtags that are way more interesting than others. Right, right. No, no. I've, yeah, yeah. They, they, but I said necessarily, right? So yeah. Oh, if, right, you're right. If everyone on Saturday tweets Super Bowl, has something or other hashtag Super Bowl, something or other, yeah. and that is the most used hashtag of that day, then you'll they actually have trending. You know that, and some people will try to just get their hashtag trending. Right. And now I haven't tried to get Run Third tw- trending yet. What? What? So now I'll transition to the ex- explanation of the thing yes. you were asking about. Actually, you know, be, before you, be, before you yeah. go on, if you don't mind, can you explain to me what that little A is with the circle around it? Start there. Yeah, <laughs> it's an at sign which is on your computer. <laughs> is Chris making fun of me in his and, lie way here? Well, no, sorry, I'm, I'm absolutely making fun of you. No, no, this is a good question. For if you're getting a Twitter for dummies, you know, kind of start. That when I said uh, everybody has a name, yes. right? My mine is I said at Sean Aston, yes. which actually meant at the at sign yeah. and then my name. So somebody else's handle oh. can be uh, at Coney. Oh, well, there right? you and go. It's the at sign and Coney. That's their that's their name, their address. It, you have to have that at sign at the beginning in, in order for it to make sense. I'm a Facebook guy. Oh gosh, yeah, I'm a. It's easy. It's like it's for dummies. It's not as easy as Twitter. I promise you, Twitter really? is a thousand times easier than Facebook. Facebook has you can do more with because you can you know it, you can post pictures that you can see like oh, Twitter yeah. you have to attach things and stuff but but anyhow it run third though run no, third okay so what I did was the, the, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you talk for a minute I've all been right. talking too long all right uh, millions of years of evolution and now, all right, so now, we're run third Caesar needs to be calling up Twitter right now and being like Sean Aston just explained Twitter right you need to put that on your well, face they had, they your Facebook cri- or whatever right. they had criers <laughs> all right next they had that, cri- like in the in the in the, uh, in the revolutionary days I know that's a little bit yeah after Caesar but yeah. uh, you have you have the town criers I'm sure they have the same thing where you tell somebody and they run out and tell other people. So that's what it is. So this is what it is. It's on the Only internet. It's an illicit direct communication. Right now, 
this thing that I'm doing, we I'm up to uh, just under twenty thousand followers. That's good. That's Craig Bierkoville, I call it. Yeah. Well. Oh, so you can <laughs> judge people based on their followership. You just don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, yes, no, exactly. No. Unbelievable. <laughs> Haven't I been saying this all along? It's Bierkoville. <laughs> Get yeah, a new commercial with Coors, man. Yeah, yeah. You got your Coors commercial. It's coming out, yeah. what, playoff time? Yeah. So, like, end of April, yeah. mid-April? Yeah, me and, me and, me and Cube going to confront these cans, and we're going <laughs> to shut some cans down. <laughs> and Monster Energy drinks are the best energy drinks in the world. If you're not drinking Monster, you ain't drinking nothing. Hey, and I still got the bicycle, and I still got the duct tape. Can you dig it? <laughs> <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Sleep with your lights on. Zeus is in town. Ice Cube, lock your doors. I still got the bicycle. Chris Tucker, you better get on your knees and pray to God. Said I don't reach out and touch you like AT and T. Oh, don't make me mad. I hate road trips. What? That's what I love about. I get car sick. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. Let me hit the brakes, Matthew. She gets sick from going out. She gets car sick from the from a car. What do you do? How do you get no, around? When I was a, when I was an infant, where's your wheelchair? I'm my mom, for. my mom used to tell me when I was an infant, and she would stick me in the stroller. I was the best baby in the world, but every time I went in the stroller or the car, I would scream bloody murder. Oh my! God. And then later, when I was old enough to talk, she realized that I was just motion sickness. Candace, what is going Candace. on with you? The more, you the, more, the more I just want to hug you, I feel like bad for you. <laughs> no, no, but if, <laughs> if you I hug sick, her, she's the probably going to throw up. Wait, let me ask the publicist. <laughs> okay, was she sick on the way here? Do you have to like give her a boss bag? <laughs> We're going oh. six blocks. So she has a, <laughs> okay. Although, one year when I was younger, I got strep throat nine times. <laughs> nine times? In like a period of time? <laughs> In a year. <laughs> At least we don't never share a soda with us. <laughs> oh my God! Or a coffee. Oh, you are a man. walking virus. I know. How do they put up with you at G four? Are you like always sick at you Attack know, of the Kevin's Show? Kevin's always sick too. It's like one week I'm sick, the next week Kevin's sick. All these dirty celebrities get you sick. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I know a lot of them. I have a Jeff Garland story. Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, it's really kind of a me story, but Jeff Garland's in it we a like little bit. We like you stories okay. with Jeff Garland and supporting so girls. So I met him that night yeah. at the party that you were too busy to say hi to me yes. to because oh. you just packed up your stuff yeah. and had a cannoli and it just you just couldn't <laughs> be bothered. I love how she knows what I was eating. Too. I know. <laughs> and um, I, I I met him that night and he was very sweet. He's a fan of the show and he was very sweet to me about my work, and, which yeah. I, I kind of have a hard time when people are like, oh, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm like... I don't really do anything. I mean, you know, I feel like I show up and I do my job, and I think I'm good at my I'm job. I'm a big fan. Oh, well, thank you. Like, but you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. And so it's like, it, 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 and it's something that I really want to be better at about accepting those compliments. Yeah. Because you don't want to be like, oh, no. That's what I do. No. I do you know the what whole, I mean? Eh, whatever. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so he was really sweet, and I said, um, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I met you before, actually. I took my friend, I'm going to just say her name because I think she'd be okay with that. I took my friend Bonnie Zane okay. to a, uh, and she knows everybody in, yeah. in, in L.A. I took her to a gifting suite with me. And when we got there, the really sweet woman checking us in asked me my name. And I said, I'm Betsy Brandt. I said, I'm sure you recognize me from my large body of work. <laughs> and she said, uh, she said, I really, my boyfriend is a huge fan of your show. And I said, I only said that because I thought you didn't know who I was, which yeah. is why you asked my name. If I thought you knew who I was. I would never have said, oh, I'm sure you recognize me from my large body of work. I was just trying to be funny. And Bonnie said, I will give you 50 bucks if you say that to every person we meet today. <laughs> mm, so and I did. think, A, I can't pass on a challenge. And B, 50 bucks is 50 bucks. Yeah, that's a lot of case up there. That's right. That's a lot of, and and a, and a whole case of Modelo. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so... So I did it, and I met Jeff Garland that day, and I said, oh, I was just watching you, like an hour ago. I just saw you before I came here. And then I said, I'm, and she introduced me, Bonnie introduced me, because she knows him, and I said, I'm sure you recognize me from my large body of work, because I said to everyone, <laughs> Ellen Cumming, ev- everyone that day, and a few people did recognize me, but it was really funny, when they're like, I have no yeah. idea who yeah, she who is. are you? <laughs> no idea. And I told Jeff, I said, I actually met you before on this day that Bonnie Zane and I had made this bet that I would say, I'm sure you recognize me from my large body of work to <laughs> everyone I met, and I said, but you didn't know who I was, because you didn't watch Breaking Bad, so you didn't really care. It's you thought I was just show. some annoying actor. It's his favorite show. <laughs> it, it is, yeah. Yeah. He knew. He knew. So 
I auditioned for I don't I don't know if it was out or if it just was a flop or I don't know. It was called Vegaton the movie. What was it called? Like it's about Vegaton, like that type of music. No, yeah, I never Vegaton. heard of it. No. Well, Re- I guess it never. I don't know if that's what the the title. It may end up so something else. I yeah. went and auditioned for. I think it was like produced by Jennifer Lopez or I don't know. And so it was, I guess, this movie about like a dirty dancing, but about it. I got yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> so I go in, I read for this, and then she's like, "All right, you ready?" I'm like, "Ready." She's like, she turns on Daddy Yankee on her little <laughs> stereo, and she's like, "Go!" And she wanted me to break it down like booty dance that I got on in this like small little room <laughs> with like bright lights, <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> I mean, are you gonna give me five shots of tequila before? Like I'm not like how am I supposed to? Be like? So I just like I broke it down and I literally wanted to kill myself. Wow! I walked out of there like I've never felt more ridiculous. Did you not get a call back? I didn't get a call back. So that made I don't you think feel even my, worse. No, it wasn't because of my moves. I was probably not like Puerto Rican looking enough or something. Like I like it was just pale, like tall Eastern European chick like, pretending to be Latin, but um. I like I no I can dance. Yeah. Okay. But I but I was but I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was like I just like do you know what it is to booty dance in broad daylight like you know in a little no, room. Like, no, I know what it is to like to booty surprise? dance by you myself. Do? By myself, though, yeah. I was like, give me a guy. Or Not give for, me like, a, casting agent. A pool, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it, was a, it was not a good time, but it, it's a good story. 